value that they were bringing to the enterprise that made this all you know solution disruptive making guys you know i want palato i am hearing about palato i remember before palato you know moved fully to africa that is more especially in east africa we used to have a couple of banks talk about I, you guys don't you know do palo alto we want palo alto you know we've been hearing about palo alto again now the issue was a little bit of support so you realize that uh, some of the customers from those guys who've implemented before they'll tell you that they can sometimes even forget that there was a firewall there so you might not have this kind of you know a new application came in you know some kind of upgrade you know was done and then all of a sudden the application crashed or cannot be able to access it so we'll be able to come up with a, a way that now does automation so by a solution that is going to rely on, in, on automation we'll see how we can be able to reduce the number of administrative tasks again some of the features the customer out there might be seeing some kind of value in as we know most of our most of our departments there is some kind of a, a limitation of security experts so we did a solution that is a little bit uh, complex you know a little bit not more complex something that is intuitive something that is simple to maintain visibility i want to get where where i want in the shortest clicks possible and again this is the kind of approach that palo alto was you know was trying to bring across to the market and we'll see in a few uh, you know a few minutes when we'll be doing some kind of uh, Anson, we'll see how simple the interface is, how we can be able to, uh, to maybe navigate where we want. For those guys who will be asking questions, um, I want to see well, feature one, two, three, then maybe we'll be able to address it as we'll be going through hands on session. So, this session will contain two sessions uh, or, or maybe three. So, we'll have what you call a Kahoot. So, a Kahoot is a small session for questions. Uh, and then uh, we have the, the hands-on labs where we'll be able to access the hands-on lab maybe play around with the gear try to do one two three policies and maybe get to see the value of follow alto networks so again from 2005 being an innovative uh, company there are a lot of things that have been happening each and every day we seeing new acquisition for the unpicked companies yesterday you know no i think uh, yesterday but one Two days ago, there was another acquisition for the cloud again, which is called uh, Cloud Genix. So again, uh, augmenting the Prisma that we are going to see, as you can see, three sections. So Palo Alto again is again innovative. So the first one was the enterprise. So Palo Alto was known by the virtue that they were the players of next generation firewall, which was the enterprise grade firewall. So it again now emerged to be expanding. We wanted to make sure that the cloud where everyone, everyone is heading to, the, all the infrastructure is again covered and make sure that we can also work on the future. How can we be able to come up with solutions that can be, uh, you know, um, predictive? I don't want to see when something is happening. So by analyzing different kind of patterns, we can be able to even detect when maybe something is going to occur so that we can be able to block it. So predictive. So predictive is whereby you can be able to predict patterns in a more active manner. So, so that is the enterprise that contains now the next generation firewall. We'll be able to see maybe in a few slides how it looks like. Then the second section is called Prisma. So the first one, Secure the Enterprise, it again, uh, you know, it has, uh, it has transformed because of different solutions uh, that have been uh, also expanded on the platform. Now it's called Strata. So whatever you see the term Strata, maybe I need to update my, my, my PowerPoint again. So Strata is the new branding for the enterprise, so which contains the firewall. And the cloud solutions, so the, these are solutions that are delivered from the cloud. They are called Prisma. So Prisma is a family of cloud-delivered solutions. Think about software as a service, where we can be able to do firewall as a service. So let's say you don't have maybe a solution, uh, or maybe you don't have a full-fledged company here, then you want your guys maybe to work from home, or there's a new branch that is somewhere, let's say in, um, in Lagos, 
and uh, the HQ is in, uh, let's say, South Africa, then we can try to have firewall as a service in one of the cloud provider next to Lagos, right? Then we have firewall as a service. So you don't need to have a, a box there to be able to achieve this. So you will leverage on the cloud. So have one interface powered up, we do the connections, then you can be able to reduce the latencies. Then now there is the future, which is called the Cortex. So Cortex is going to address how we can be able to have a next-gen fork how we can be able to leverage data. We know that the future of everything is data. You've been seeing a lot of fights that are happening between different countries, the superpowers, trying to see how, which is the first you know, country to be able to fully handle 5G. Then we'll see how, why 5G? We'll see that it can be able to do more than 14 times the speed of the normal current LG, LTE or 4G. So which means that it's going to pass a lot of traffic. So why Cortex? We know that the more data that you can be able to handle, the more you can be able to strategically be positioned to handle more intelligence. And we'll be seeing a few kind of solutions that Palo Alto is providing to be able to combat uh, the, you know, the automatic uh, attacks, yeah, what you call the, the DGS. So, the more, the more data that you're going to collect, so one of the solutions that's called Cortex Data Lake, this is a platform that can be able to pull data from different sources, store it in a structured manner that can allow different AI-based applications to be able to consume it. So by having this kind of algorithms, you can be able to match different metrics to be able to come up with a, a, a lot of accuracy. And again, this augments the intelligence that we are going to see uh, in a little bit. So three sections, so Strata for the enterprise, Prisma for the cloud, and again, Cortex for the future. Yeah. So we today we're going to focus more on the securing the enterprise, so which is more of the next generation firewall. So we need to understand what is this that we need to see? How can we make sure that you've got the right solutions? So if you have maybe a firewall, a different vendor that is sitting in your on-prem, how can I be able to evaluate if you want to do maybe hardware refresh? What are these kind of key components, key things that you need to get into consideration to make sure that you're getting the right what, the right architecture, you're getting the right platform that can be able to transform, not maybe three years, you need a, a different hardware, maybe after two years. How can you have something that can be able to contain different kind of upgrades, different kind of inventions? So you need to have something that is elastic, like maybe, for example, the cloud. So for us to be able to understand that, we need to understand where we are coming from. So what is this that is making guys, you know, sleepless? I saw some kind of a meme that was going, uh, you know, in these uh, uh, professional platforms. How different kind of C, C level, uh, C level executives try to sleep. Then I'm seeing a CEO sleeping like, you know, he's relaxed. Then I'm seeing another CXO. Then what was interesting is when we reached at the CIO, that is uh, the guy who is, you know, focusing on the technology and security being part of his docket, he was not asleep. He was just, you know, sleeping on his back, trying to figure out what is happening. So it's like some of these CXO levels, they are running some kind of a virtual sock inside their bedrooms. They're trying to figure out, is someone trying to, to you know, to hit me? Is there someone who's trying to address something that maybe I didn't patch? So is there someone who's trying to leverage on a vulnerability that was announced yesterday? So it's like they're not sleepless. So earlier on, we used to have some kind of peaceful nights. Ezra, hi Ezra, sorry to interrupt you. Um, the slides are not changing. Yeah? Oh, yeah, okay. the slides are not changing. So, audience oh, are sorry. not floating. Yeah, okay, okay, sure. Let me see. Yeah, and, and guys, if someone has a question, if you need um, Ezra to slow down on something, please just interrupt him and just tell him to, you know. Um, slow down or you're not clear with something, don't keep quiet. Okay, sorry guys, let me see if there's something I need to fix.
Faith, I don't know you can see in the beginning. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yes, okay. Uh, yes, sir, we can see only the uh, secure that were slides only. You need to uh, end the slide manually. Okay. 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 Sorry for the uh, inconvenience. Uh, Edza will uh, do the presentation right now. So, Edza, over to you. You can see now in the beginning? Yes, I can. I can see. In the beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah. Please okay. go ahead. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Hari. Thank you, Hari. Thank you, Faith. Okay, sorry again. Uh, you know, sometimes these applications uh, they crash. I don't know. Maybe someone is trying to hit me. <laughs> okay, so we need to understand what was in the beginning. How was the infrastructure? Why is it that now we are having a lot of sleep, uh, you know sleepless nights? You know, yesterday I, it was uh, last week yeah, over the weekend. One of our uh, you know of our organizations, not uh, really protected by a panel. One of the schools was doing this Zoom, and uh, the bad guys were able to get in. They used some of the vulnerabilities that have been going around, and then the session was hijacked. And uh, the guys were presented some uh, with some naughty stuff. One of the international schools. And again, these are some of the challenges. So I believe Palanto had addressed this more than uh, I think a week ago or two. Some of these vulnerabilities by you know this application Zoom. So again, these are some of the challenges again people are facing each and every day, defacing other stuff. So in the beginning, we didn't have these kind of scenarios. So we used to have two sections, the internet and the LAN. So two sections. So before the LAN, before you know things started, you know, uh, being distributed, the internet again came in. A LAN was a small community whereby people can interact without any problem so there was no this kind of corona you can visit your friend you know we can share content then again now issues started coming this is now when the fencing exactly started so i remember earlier on the land used to be a community based so you can just go you know we dig together whatever uh, you know we get some good uh, products you can be able to share or eat as a family then well now these problems started to, uh, to to come up this is where now we were able to introduce the firewall so the firewall came in this is i uh, remember when the cisco asa appliances were the talk of the town they were doing some nice jobs of course even now they are doing some nice stuff of course in layer three and layer four so we started having this kind of no i want to make sure that i'm allowing only what guys are supposed to be doing so the introduction of the firewall came in so there was the issue of trust and untrust in some more advanced architectures we used to have also the dmz because we realized that some of the services that are hosted locally need to be published over the internet so then what was to be done is to introduce this firewall to make sure that there is, there is some kind of segregation of this data so people are to sit down Again, we saw some kind of transition now from this to some things like UTM. But before the UTM, what used to happen? So the firewall was there, but the firewall was not handling the SSL inspection. Most of the traffic was plain text. I hope Harry, you can see this slide, better security, meant for appliances. Yeah? Larry Faith, guys, I don't know whether it's still uh, transitioning. It is in the ah. beginning. Can you change the slides? Okay, okay. So, firewall was not doing the SSL. So, what did it mean? You had to bring in 
a different vendor to do SSL inspection, for example, maybe a five. You wanted a proxy, then you go for Symantec. Then you also you wanted to have WAV, maybe you go for Radware, Apple. You needed an IDS, IPS, and again an antivirus. So all these solutions were complex because every solution here, as you can see, it does its own stuff. As much as it's good for super security, but again, it introduces a lot of complexity. The cost is abnormal. So you got an approval for maybe a wolf recently. Then another guy is coming for an IPS. He does the presentation, it makes sense. Then again, you can't go to the management, then start telling them, oh guys, uh, there is an antivirus that I was told that has to be doing its job, please. This is what the firewall is not doing. It's doing just layer three and layer four. So we need to make sure that the virus is also doing the stuff. So this is a problem. So for the IT guys, this is a challenge because they need also to start learning again. In most of the organizations, I am sure that you'll find the IT manager is the one who's doing the support or maybe has one or two, three guys or three interns who might not be able to have the experience to handle all these kind of solutions. So again, it'll be the point of contact. Please do this, calls everywhere. So you can't get enough time to do what? To do these works, to also learn how an antivirus works and then be able to fine tune it. So these kind of challenges were becoming hectic. So not only from the, from the cost perspective, or many appliances which are going to reduce, you know, to introduce a lot of, uh, uh, complexities and a learning curve they were introducing another vulnerability so which is this another vulnerability the one of the vulnerability is the users themselves that's what we uh, learned uh, you know we we, we learned uh, a few you know a few months ago users so if you can't train your users then there's a problem they are going to introduce malware clicking everywhere they want to download everything then also the the IT guys themselves because they can't get all this enough time on earth to be able to start all these solutions they are going to do what default the auditors are coming most of them they realize that these solutions have been installed default 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 so which is again going to reduce to introduce some kind of security gaps in our in, in our environment so we we had to come up with a better way to consume these things. So was there to be a better way to reduce this cost from multi-vendor environment, from these appliances that are introducing different ways in which we, we could consume this? Then here came another way we need to address this. So how can we make sure that we are doing things differently? So what happened is is to make sure that we are consuming things under one under one word under one platform so the better way to consume this is to make sure that whichever the solution that's going to come has to prevent successful attacks not like for example an ids intrusion detection system yes it has detected and logged so what is to make sure that we are doing as much automation as possible not wherever the new application is coming you need to go to the firewall add it how can we have things like application filters in palo alto that can be able to come up with the different kind of characteristics for example create one application filter that may uh, that looks at uh, for example if it's a peer-to-peer -peer application with a security level of four that is doing file transfer that has got a risk again of this level that is under category maybe adult content or maybe phishing uh, category block this so if there is a new application that's going to come tomorrow or there's a new url category that's going to come tomorrow you don't need to go manually and edit this from the firewall you just need to go direct you know you just need to uh you know go to the firewall fix the you know pick the right update and this automatically is going to be enforced on that kind of rule that you are created so 
With this kind of automation, you don't need to focus on other critical matters. Maybe learn about something new. Also expand your knowledge on the you know new attack vectors and see how you can be able to also reduce this. How can we be able to make sure that we consuming innovations quickly? So new solutions are coming. How can we make sure that we are also consuming this kind of innovation? So these are the three things that an, a serious solution should help you. So by talking about automation and consuming innovations quickly, we are already talking about our artificial intelligence. Automation cannot come with just, you know, any data. For you to do automation and do maybe deep uh, machine learning, you need the right data for you to be able to do this. And this is what Cortex, we talked about this before, can be able to do. Consume innovations quickly. How can we be able to have a platform that if anything that is going to come on board, we can be able to do this quickly? So, what are these key things that we, this kind of architecture, need to address? Right? So, some of these things is to make sure that we have got solutions. I hope you can see this screen. The right network uh, security foundation. So, we have to make sure that the user is visible. We are creating policies based on a user, not just an IP address. We have to make sure that we have a policy that is based on the application, not just a port. We need to make sure that we have a solution that is content aware. Who is still trying to transfer my PPT application to an archiving uh, platform. Why is he moving this content that I can see is marked private and confidential? Then it triggers a, a rule to you, maybe to your desk. You get a mail that this guy from marketing is trying to transfer an exam from uh, maybe uh, from the finance team that is marked uh, private and confidential. So we need to get deep packet inspection, get the content, not just ports. Also, we need to make sure that we have a different deployment flexibility. We talked about the digital transformation from the on-prem to the cloud. How can we make sure that if any of you are moving to the cloud or you've got workloads which are the cloud, people who are moving in different locations, we can be able to extend the same same security to make sure that everybody is protected by the same same security policies that are within the enterprise. So another key thing is to make sure that we have got simple, so mark the word simple and consistent management. So know that whenever you are going to bring in a management uh, interface or a management device, then again it needs to send you to school or to a learning management system to start again learning from scratch. So you need to have some kind of consistent and simple management. You get what you want to get in as few clicks as possible. The intuitiveness. We all, we know all know uh, how Microsoft was able to win this market for bringing in an an intuitive uh, solution that can be able to uh, you know help the non IT guys to be able to navigate easily without any challenges. So anything you know simple can help us reduce the time that we are going to take. You know trying to boil the ocean to get where we want. I want if this is a report, it's a nice report that shows the user, hey, maybe Edwin, who is trying to access application Facebook, then the content is trying to share maybe a picture. And for security, uh, as immediate as possible. Okay? So, the right foundation gives you insight and policy control. Ari, Ari man, today, then I think I have to trouble with you a little bit. So I don't know whether you can also be able to see this uh, slide. The Rate Foundation gives you insight and policy control. No, uh, no, Ezra, can you change the slide? Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, then I think I'm not present, so uh, we might miss a little bit of animations, but uh, we'll see how we can be able to fix that one, maybe in a short while. So, the right, the right foundation have 
has to give you the kind of insight. We talked about that you cannot be able to protect what you can't do what, what you can't uh, see, what you don't know. So if, you, if I cannot know that maybe uh, this IP address 96, sorry, 64.81.2.23 is, uh, is from the attacker side, then how can you be able to block this? So the kind of visibility that you wanted to bring across is to eliminate the first uh, column which talked about which, which, which talks about the source IP. So from the bottom, we can be able to see something that makes sense to us for those guys who've been in the industry for quite some time. This is how ASA used to implement uh, their what? Their policies. So this we used to call this layer four or layer, three, layer, four, layer 3, layer 4 based policies. So layer 3 in a manner that you're trying to block or allow a source IP that is trying to access uh, content on a certain port, for instance 443, and it's going to the destination of this uh, IP or this network. So we'll understand shortly how ports are never what we expected them to be. 4443 might not be HTTPS. Post, post 53, for example, cannot be DNS. And so on and so forth. So we need to come with a policy that even if it's someone who's not from the IT uh, side, it can't be able to make sense to him. For example, we need to have a one flow from one single pane. I can be able to see or read that policy and make sense to me. So, for example, you need to come up with a policy like when you see Joe Davis is trying to access HTTP or HTTPS. So, for example, 443 is HTTP running on SSL. Then uh, this IP is Canada. So, it's trying to access this stuff from Canada. So, so Joe Davis, where is Joe Davis? So, Joe Davis is in the finance team. What he's trying to do is trying to do a slide share or, or uh, access a slide share application that is an online backup and storage solution and what is trying to do with this slide share is trying to upload a PPT and from our content awareness game we can see that is trying to access a document that is written private and confidential so by having this kind of visibility or insight you can be able to come up with a better policy control so again this is a uh, this is where some kind of animation i don't know whether it will work let me try so i want to try this animation because it does it doesn't seem to be making more sense so the introduction of the next generation firewall was to make sure that we have got this visibility so all these kind of solutions that were being bought by you know from different vendors by the IT team, we put it in one platform. So I don't know, I, I, Ari, can you see this kind of animation? No. I am not able to see that animation, but uh, it is an introduction of next generation firewall. You can go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, the next generation firewall was to make sure that all these kind of solutions can be put together in one platform. So, to make sure that you can be able to consume all those kind of resources from a single pane. So how was this possible? So instead of buying an IPS as a silo solution or a, or, or, or a point solution, buy an antivirus, buy an IDS, buy a proxy, then also buy maybe buy a firewall. So all these solutions were to be put together and be consumed as one solution. All right? So, by default, we ship the first next generation solution 
But the things that we talked about, so it has to be application aware, not just support. It has to be user aware, not, not just an IP address. It has to be content, content aware, yeah? Not just, you know, a port. So we have to make sure that the content we are not just internet. Which kind of this content that we are trying to address here? So again, this is where now the next generation firewall was to address. So we don't want a scenario whereby these three things, as Palo Alto was the you know the pioneer, they came up with the next generation firewall. So if someone is selling you a next generation firewall which doesn't have app id use id and content id by default free not licensed mark my words so things like app id out of the box out of the box this is free in Palo Alto, we don't do what we don't sell app id so this is part of the next gen next generation firewall then again we have to make sure that there is a seamless integration built from bottom up not try to stitch this solution together in order to do what to provide a solution because some of you may be asked so what is this kind of uh, value that these solutions uh, uh, are to bring across so we realize that for, from the UTM market we used to have something like an hypervisor then virtual machines inside so we let's say you had an hypervisor, for example, you are doing virtualization on your your machine, that is your PC. Then from this, you are getting a scenario whereby 14 GB is the total memory for the hypervisor, and maybe you've got 10 cores. So if you allocate 10 cores, you know, from these 10 cores, you allocate what the first virtual machine, you allocate it. Two, two gigab sorry uh, two gigabits of RAM and maybe three cores. So wh what does it mean? It means that you're decrementing from the resource pool that you have, isn't it? So the more you turn on these virtual machines, they are going to share these kind of resources that are within the hypervisor. So we'll see that the introduction of these kind of um, uh, virtual machines, which now other vendors call uh, engines, doing different kind of stuff, they introduced some kind of issues, which were, for example, when you turn on App ID engine, the performance is going to go down because the resources from the resource pool of the hypervisor are going to be decremented, which again is going to have some issues with the performance. So, these are some of the challenges that needed to be addressed. So, what are these kind of now features that you have to make sure that we consume? Wildfire was one of them. So, Ari, can you see wildfire? I'm trying also to, ch to change it manually. It's no. a little bit scrambled, right? No, you're it's scrambled. Yeah. Okay, just a minute. Sorry, guys. Okay, so 
go this minute. All right, Harry, you can see now the presentation. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Go. All right. So, uh, just something small. Eh? Is the animation now working? Please go ahead, sir. Please. All right, all right. So, I don't know whether you can be able to see those kind of subscription wildfire. Ari, can you see wildfire? The subscriptions? No, 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 no. Just you uh, up on the slide. Uh, sorry, guys, this is a minute. I'm trying to see some of the slides uh, become scrambled. Let me see if I can fix that. As you can see now, yeah, you can see this, uh, the presentation now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Okay, is it uh, you know moving in slides? Yeah, it is. Uh, it is in animation uh, mode, so you can go ahead. Okay. okay, sure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Please go ahead. Okay. The presentation. Okay. Okay, fine. Sorry about that because uh, it you could have not continued uh, because some of the things were a little bit scrambled. So again, we talked about this. So this was the plain way in which things were done. Then introduction of HTTP. Then uh, we talked about how we can be able to grade maybe from not only create policies based on either finance or be able to come up with the policies based on a user himself. For example, I can say, for all the remote access tools, I don't want to leave them in unsafe hands because we can see even uh, from the couple of attacks that we normally see from uh, the Kenyan side or East Africa. And I also had one of the such cases in uh, Nigeria, is that someone comes with a flash disk it might be someone from the marketing where you expect this to be done uh, from a list. Then what happens is someone is going to bring this flash. It will run something. Then, or maybe this guy is going to come up uh, with, um, let's say, Team Viewer is on his desktop. So he run this with Team Viewer. Then he'll give access to the bad guys who might be a little bit techy to take over this. So. By limiting or coming, the, come, coming up with a policy to only limit remote access tools like to viewer, remote desktop, to only finance guys, so this can be able to reduce the attack vector by more than 70%. So why this is essential is that he, instead of creating a user by user allowing them policies, it can allow you to do one group, do one policy, if next day 
another guy is going to come to IT team, you don't need to go to the uh, firewall again, add this user. So, so long as it picks this content, for example, from an uh, elder or a certain group uh, that we've created uh, from one central repository, this automatically adds this user and he can be able to use these kind of privileges. So what we're seeing from the role-based uh, uh, you know, role access uh, control solutions that we see mostly from the cloud, right? So be able to categorically see the exact content. Which kind of action? Is he doing uploading? Or is he doing downloading? So this kind of granularity can also make even our uh, reports be uh, much much clean. So here is what uh, what I wanted us to see. So we talked about different siloed solutions, IPS, WAF, this. Trust me, if you buy these solutions as a single solution and buy this as one platform, there will be savings up to more than uh, let's talk about more than 50 percent so our next generation firewall was to make sure that it has got all these under one solution put them together then come up with the next generation firewall so the UTO market used to do this we talked about the hypervisor you know analogy whereby yeah these things are happening but the initial hardware architecture was not meant to what to address all these things so you add a virtual machine inside the same same kind of a limitation with the approach on how the consumption of these resources is predetermined, then we are going to see some kind of applications which might be hoggy in terms of uh, resources, taking over the resources. And in, uh, the, the aftermath is that there are going to be something like a single point of failure. So if one solution is going to take time to try to come up with a policy, then it will make sure that there is going to be a packet delay. We will see shortly how the output of one blade or the output of one module is going to be the input of the second blade or engine. So the architecture and get the next generation firewall was to make sure that all these things come into place. And one of the key things they were to make sure that they achieve is visibility not just ip addresses so we have to make sure that we are seeing consistent visibility across the infrastructure by being able to see who is that user by name not the ip going to what server yeah to accessing what application then we had to come up with subscriptions that can be able to augment this next generation firewall to be able to do what it does better. So the first, <clears throat> the first subscription is wildfire. So, so what is wildfire? So wildfire is Palo Alto Network sandboxing solution. So wildfire protects us against zero day attacks. This is something that maybe we are seeing today that we have never seen before so our platform has never seen this before maybe this is a firewall uh, this is a malware that has been created like three minutes ago so we, if we have never seen this file before we'll push it to wildfire so wildfire is going to do analysis not only static analysis it is going out to force it to bare metal analysis whereby it is now going to do like the real time uh, like analysis like as if that malware was running on a laptop or a desktop. One of the limitations the current sandboxing environment have is that they cannot be able to run this on a what? On a bare metal. So what is going to happen is we are not going to get the verdict 90%. If you look at uh, some of the latest research from NSS labs, you realize that our effectiveness is the leading. That is around 97%. What does it mean? Is that the accuracy of the engines. So what is this that, that is augmenting this kind of accuracy? Is the wildfire. So other vendors try to run this on virtual machines. And the sophistication of uh, the latest malware is that they can be able to say that I'm running on a virtual machine. So what will it do? It will not execute. So the sandboxing environment will say this is a good file. Please let's go ahead and let's uh, execute. 
They can be able to achieve this by using different metrics. For example, it can be able to query what is this, uh, what is this, what is the temperature of this uh, device. So because the virtual environment or the VM does not interface directly to the hardware, it cannot be able to, to, to get this. It will uh, return a zero. Hence, it will know that I'm running on this. It can't be able to check the keystrokes. So by us going to an extra level of running this malware on a bare metal hardware, what will happen is that we'll now be able to come up with the exact verdict. So we'll be able to narrow down, reduce the false positives. So we have got another one, the threat prevention, now that contains also the antivirus in it. So this protects us from different array of uh, uh, manual, uh, you know, threats that are going to be conveyed via the, the infrastructure from the firewall or, or the, anything that's going to come from the threats that, that, that are going to come from the traffic that you're going to consume from the internet. Then we've got URL filtering, which now is going, is going to enable us get <coughs> more clean rules. For example, if this is a URL that we had seen before from the bad guys, so we'll automatically include it in our database. So we can block based on those malicious URLs. We know that this URL, we know it, it's a bad URL, so please don't go to this site. I want to block all the gambling sites. This is where URL comes in. I want to block all maybe known phishing sites. So this is where URL filtering again comes very handy. So another another solution that we have that again making Palo Alto a little bit uh, competitive in the market. I'm sure nobody is doing now DNS security. Inline DNS security on the platform. That's what I mean. If maybe anybody thinks there's another solution that's doing DNS security, maybe you can comment on the on the you know on the chat below. Then you can be able to discuss this maybe when we'll be doing the Q and A. So it's only Palato that is doing DNS security in line. That is platform, not consuming from the cloud. That is what you call uh, maybe out of band or not in line. So. Any solution that is being able to do things in line, then it shows some kind of level of accuracy, unlike passive mode. So this is again one of the features that I normally see most of the banks are trying to query. Most of the uh, you know, security focused organizations want to see. Why? Most of the attacks that we are experiencing today are being propagated by artificial intelligence. I remember there was a, a, a competition that happened uh, a few years ago in the US. So this is a competition between machines and humans competing. So they're given one, 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 one specimen or one uh, target, then they try to attack it, discover the vulnerabilities and also exploit them. So there's this galaxy machine that was able to beat humans by far, hands down, and it was able to discover this kind of vulnerabilities by using artificial intelligence. Nobody is doing what? Nobody is operating this machine. So what does that, that tell you? We are competing against machines. So there's a machine that is sleeping somewhere, knows about the trends in Nigeria. Guys sleep from maybe from 9 p.m. Nobody is operating on the bank. So this is the best time to do the scanning. This is the best time to uh, utilize the vulnerability. So if you don't have a solution that is again leveraging on artificial intelligence to fight another artificial intelligence, then this is where another vulnerability or a security gap that's going to come. So please, if you find time, please try to maybe do a little bit of research on DNS security, or if someone has a question, if you want me to elaborate more, then we can also discuss that one during the um, discussion about, about uh, you know, question and answer uh, session. So, DNS security protects us from DGS, what we call dynamically generated algorithms. So this is a system of creating small URLs that are short lived So think about a URL or a, a domain that's going to last for something like five seconds. Let's talk about that seconds. So by the time your IT team or your SOC analysts are going to start, you know, querying 
try to you know uh, doing a reverse dns lookup try to understand what it's already dead delivered what it, it, it was meant to deliver maybe it's a small snippet of a malware code then it was then all of a sudden now it creates another code you see maybe the inbuilt uh, native tools like powershell to bring all these kind of snippets together in order to form a malware attack so what does this do it's going to be able to ensure that it can be able to go past the normal firewalls which don't have this dns security so DNA security again uses machine learning and uh, to be able to sense these kind of patterns because remember this is a machine that follows a certain, a certain uh, kind of a pattern. For example, if you do 44 URL 81, then 45 URL 82, then skip a little bit, then again to go to another pattern. So these kind of URLs are going to be generated randomly, but following a certain pattern. Now that DNS security can be able to detect and uh, control so by doing this again i'm um, trying to cut, cut off this attack vector so the last one not least uh, because again uh, the innovation of palo alto things move each and every day we've got global protect so what is this so this global protect is one of my peers called uh, vpn on steroids so why is this vpn on steroids the normal vpn solution the remote access vpn we don't license it. This is free. Do you want to access to the internet? This is what I normally tell the IT guys who know what to, what to do, what to access and where, what not to download, how uh, the, the, to ensure the sanity of their PCs can use. So the normal VPN is free. But the Global Protective VPN solution has got some kind of advanced capabilities, like NAC capabilities in it. It can be able to check what is the security status of the device. For example, does it have the latest patches? Does it have the latest maybe antivirus? You know, what kind of you know security profile you can attach to this to make sure that if this machine then uh, falls be you know uh, within this range, then please don't allow it to access some special resources or company critical infrastructure. Otherwise. It can also be able to get to leverage on things that's getting from mal, uh, mal, you know wildfire threat intelligence cloud which again can be able to assist in making uh, more uh, customizing or tuning on its own algorithms that it uses to make sure that this heaps profile are checked as part so you can see there is another one which is green which means it's a little bit new but not that new this was introduced late last year that is December, and this is one of a uh, new subscription that is coming on board. So SD1, what, why, why SD1? So most of the people are moving from the normal uh, one-based, uh, you know, one-based uh, solutions to a more SD, which is software-defined wide area network. So this can be able to do some kind of more intelligent stuff. For example, why should a user from Lagos try to go back to maybe Abuja where the HQ is then access things uh, you know then access office 365 we know that maybe for example LinkedIn is based on the internet so why should I back home pass through the MPLS go to the HQ then from the HQ go to that wildfire sorry uh, Palo Alto uh, uh, device then go to the internet so this is going to first saturate the pipe increase a lot of latency because of the hopes that's going to pass unlike the firewall with the sd1 capabilities look at the application check on this application uh, destination supposed to be going through the internet so if i demarcate or uh, from this uh, uh or i just exit from this firewall that is in the branch level in lagos or maybe a branch in uh, maybe zambia or uh, maybe another another one in, the, in Ghana. Instead of going going back, you can go direct to the cloud because we understand that most of our solutions now are cloud based. So this ensures that there is QoS user experience is going to be optimized. It checks, for example, you have got termination of four links. You've got LTE. You've got another one. Maybe you you are, you are using uh, another list line and maybe three. So it can be able to check all three these three lines. To see which one has got the minimal latency and automatically do the configuration on software level 
not changing the you know things like uh, the, the, the pings and the stuff you might be suffering from what you call browning so browning is whereby there is a there's some kind of latency for example if i say you're pinging there's a pinging so one timeout three timeouts four timeouts so the service is up but not fully up so by measuring what is the response rate on this link so it can be able to use that link that is a little bit faster to be able to do this kind of delivery all right so this is another so this is one of the latest so again i talked about cloud genix which is again another solution that is being introduced on the cloud or the prisma family to be able to also augment on the sd1 so you can also check on, on that, that one cloud genix is another very powerful solution as much as SD1 is concerned, and see which kind of value that it will be added. We'll be talking about this on the next session that we'll be talking about Prisma to be able to uh, a little bit expand on uh, our cloud based solutions. All right, so someone might be asking this is what other guys are doing. I mean, Checkpoint is doing this, or Fort is doing this. This is where now another value comes in that has been seen Palo Alto onboarding year over year 30 percent growth year over year why because security works security is the only section whereby you can't do gambling like you can take a dealing switch maybe juniper switch or take a huawei switch put it on the network and everything works so long as you're getting packets everything's okay so security one of the key things that guys look at when it comes to security it has to be a solution that works it has to be fast and it has not to introduce some kind of issues of latency and user bad experiences in the network. So the traditional approach is that the UTM, especially from the UTM guys who used to be the UTM vendors, what they are doing is they are merged all these solutions together, like maybe the NGFW. But now there was overload because the architecture was not meant to be done that way. Remember, Palo Alto built this from zero up. Not build something, then they, they hear that something was, you know, being, uh, you know, uh, uh, consumed, then they put it on the same, same hardware. So this kind of putting together from the previous UTM hardware led to what? An overload. So this meant that whatever you turn on maybe for an IPS engine, it's going to slow down or reduce the throughput capacity on the engine. So why was this happening? It's because the way traffic was passing. I talked about this earlier before. Now this is the best time we have a look at this. So how is traffic moving in this traditional approach, the UTMs and other solutions are, who are not using the right architecture? We talked about that the, the solution that you're consuming has to have the right architecture. So a packet is coming, firewalling is done, SSL inspection is done, if it's turned on, because sometimes it's not. Proxy is done. So you realize that the output of this WAV is going to be the input of the IDS. The output of IDS is the input of the IPS, and so on and so forth. So you see that if, for example, the WAV tends to hold some packet a little bit longer because of the small resources that it was accorded, because not all these solutions are going to go through far of policies then you see that it's going to, to increase the amount of time that it, it will uh, get the input for the idf so by the time the packet is going to the LAN, it's almost midnight so these kind of latencies is guys don't want to see you'll get you'll be getting a lot of calls from the it team guys what is happening we're seeing a lot of latencies Later on, when we are doing one of these uh, kind of uh, projects in one of the banks in, uh, in Kenya, we realized that someone had turned on, during that time I was doing a web application for all, then uh, we realized that someone had turned on an IDS, you know, an, an IPS in the firewall overnight when guys were not there, tested, everything is working. Then later on, when now people, all the users are in the infrastructure, now issues are starting up. So who, who they know is that guy who was doing the work before. After doing a little bit of troubleshooting, we realized that some guys had turned on the what? The IPS. 
uh, in the previous night, then this is what is bringing all these issues. Lucky enough is that our wealth during that time was out of band. It was not in line. Then we were able to come up with all these kind of latencies. So how is Palo Alto doing things differently? All right. This is one of the key secrets. And this is why you realize that most of these Palo Alto uh, solutions, they are not being uh, manufactured in China or Taiwan or these other countries because of one of these critical souls. They want to make sure that nobody is getting out of it. And this is what is making, guys, most of these solutions <coughs> not complete as per with the single, sorry, with Palo Alto network. So what is this secret source? It's called single pass parallel processing. Single pass parallel processing architecture. It's also called sometimes SP3 because of the double P's in, in pass parallel processing. So why is this unique? You realize that customers will ask about fine performance. What do you think guys will go for? What is the expectation of the customer? Do you want security or you want uh, or you want only a performance? The normal users might go for, I want something that is speed, I want something that is fast. I request, I receive immediately. So for the IT guys, they might be saying, okay, okay, speed is good, but uh, no. I have to be secure. I don't want to receive uh, funny calls. I don't want to get my data outside because, again, your job will be in line uh, if this happens. So, what happened is they had to go and turn off the IPS so that this security, I mean, this kind of performance uh, issues have to be solved. But is this the best way? So, single pass parallel processing promises on those two things without compromising each other. So, I want to make sure that I'm giving you all security features, all the performance as per, but again, not trying to make sure that your security is compromised. So this is what every IT guy, every department is you know, looking for, performance without. So they want both. So some guys might want one, but this is one of the key things uh, most of the IT guys are looking out there. So, how does now the flow? What makes it a little bit different? So, we have to make sure that the packets are passing once, not waiting for the output of this to be the input of that. And this should be done in parallel. Uh -huh. So, they change the blades to run in parallel. So, whatever the packet is coming, they create a span, copies once, the engine check, whatever that is happening is supposed to be checked. Compre you, you compress, everyone is returning with their own verdict, policy applied based on yes or no, or the policies, and pop, everything goes to the land. This is real time, guys. And this is what has, if you go online check on the comparison between this and other platforms, maybe Checkpoint, Cisco, 40, or maybe so forth, you realize that guys will be talking about this feature like always, this is one of the key things that they've been looking for. This is what they want. If you check on some of the, if you check on on, on some of the slides or or, or uh, spec sheets of this platform, they'll tell you for free that this was at ninety percent gigabits per second. Next, it will go to seventy. Yeah, it go to 60. So something that was passing 8, 8 gigabits per second, you turn on one engine, it goes to up to more than 350% decrement in the throughput. So what is this supposed to be meaning to you? Yeah, so performance issues. So these are some of the things that guys are looking at. And they want to make sure that if I'm bringing up a solution, it's going to make sure that this consistency is achieved. Okay? So, I want to pull out maybe, uh, I want to pull out one of the...